And by the way, can you see my screen now? Yep. All right. So, um, did you did you study the the topic about force with uh before? Um. Not yet. Right. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, maybe just uh, because this um this topic involved uh, uh discussing about force, let me start with uh talking about uh a few things about forces. Okay. Just just a very short introduction. Okay. So um. So for reference, so first of all, a force. Okay. Force is a vector. Oh wait, I I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is this is our last lesson, right? Uh, I think yes. Uh, yeah, I think I think yes. Yeah. So so, uh, because I'm I'm switching to uh, part time later. Yeah. So so I think this is the last lesson. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other question? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um. So uh. So first of all, a force is a vector. Okay. So. Um, so for example, this is an object, then you can, you can push it by a force, right? Uh, just intuitively you can think of. So, so because the direction of this object depends on the direction of this force, okay? So that's why uh, we, we got force as a vector. And then uh, once we have, once we have this, okay? So um, we, can, we can talk about, for example, the component, okay? So, so for example, if we have a force, okay, this is F. So um, if this is this angle is theta, okay, then uh, it will have two components, okay. So one component is is a uh, or is is a vertical component, okay, and we usually write it as F. Uh, this the magnitude of this is F sine theta, okay. Uh, so you can see this from trigonometry, right? Yeah, it's, it's this length, right? So, so if this vector has a length f, okay, then uh, this the length of this is f sine theta, and then the component here, the a vertical the horizontal component is f cosine theta. Uh, is this okay? Yep. All right. Um, and then, um, and then we we remember that um, there's something called a uh, Newton's uh, second law. Okay, okay. So what does Newton's second law mention? Okay, Newton's second law. So uh, New Newton's second law basically claims that uh, if you have a force, okay, then it is equal to the product of the mass of the object and the acceleration vector. Okay, so m is the mass, and then a is the vector. It is the acceleration. Okay. Um, now, uh, let me let me. Um, is it is it, is this okay? By the way. Yeah. All right. So by the way, uh, this f here means the net force. Okay. Uh. Net force means the uh, the vector sum of the force. Okay. So because uh, maybe maybe you have an object that uh, may be acted by a lot of forces. Okay. So this this law is claiming that uh, if you consider the vector sum of the forces is equal to the product of the mass and the acceleration. So um. So remember, vector sum is not just uh, adding the uh, adding the magnitude. Okay, you have to also consider direction. We we have mentioned it like two lessons be before, right? We have we have introduced vector. So um. So, so in particular, okay. So in particular, if the left hand side here, that means net force is zero. Okay. If net force is zero, then the acceleration is zero, right? I would say it's still a vector, okay, because um, they are vectors, right? Uh, and then, and then, now, now for 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 classical, 
which means new Newton's mechanics. Okay, mass is positive, so uh, we won't we we won't be able we won't uh, encounter a situation in which the mass is zero. Okay, so so this will imply that a is uh, a zero factor. Is this okay? Yeah. All right. Then uh, now in this case we'll we'll call this um this situation okay we say the particle uh is static okay or we say uh it is in a static equilibrium or I uh, let me put the bracket here because um Usually, some people may just mention that it is in equilibrium, okay? But uh, in fact, the more formal name would be static equilibrium, okay? Uh, so this is the terminology. So let's see, uh, let's see how we can uh, solve some problems by considering a concept of uh, static equilibrium, okay? So um, for example, you have the following diagram, okay? So this is your particle. And then uh, let's say uh, it, it has three forces, okay? So this force is a uh, P Newton, okay? And then this force is four Newton. And then uh, we have also another force which is Q Newton, okay? So three forces, and then uh, now if I consider this axis and uh, this axis, okay? So, so Q is, uh, is parallel to the y-axis here. And for P and 4, 4 Newton, uh, the P Newton here has a 30 degrees here and 45 degrees here, okay? And uh, so the question is, obviously we want to find the unknowns here, right? What, what are uh, P and Q? Okay, all right. So um, let's consider this diagram here, okay? Uh, let me copy this so that uh, for convenience, okay. All right. So um, how can we deal with this question? Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, you when you you can you can you can give a force. Okay. You you have you can divide it into two components, namely the horizontal and the vertical component, okay? So, so here, um, this is exactly what we want to do, okay? I'm uh, sorry, I, I, I omit, I forgot a condition here. Uh, it is in equilibrium, okay, yeah. The, um, okay, so, um, so because we're in equilibrium, okay, that means the, the force factor is zero, okay? And then uh, this will imply, imply that uh, if you consider the vertical component, okay, the vertical and the horizontal component, okay, they, they, they all vanish, right? Is this okay so far? Yeah. All right. So um, now, once we have this observation, what we're going to do is we, we consider uh, the vertical component and the horizontal component, and then uh, we, we, we just set them to be equal to zero, okay? So, so for example, if you, you see this particle here, uh, you see P, now, now P is, uh, you, can, you can consider as horizontal component, and for four Newton here, you can also consider their, uh, their components, horizontal components. And then for Q here, because it's uh, parallel to the Y axis, that means it's, uh, it don't, doesn't have any horizontal components, okay. So, uh, so for, for the horizontal component to vanish, that means uh, we, have to, we have to have these two uh, components canceling each other, okay. So, uh, so if you consider horizontal component, okay, then uh, we have the following equality, okay. So we have P cosine 30 degrees, 
uh, so and then minus this minus this uh, force which is for uh, cosine 45 degrees this has to be zero okay you understand yep. this yeah. yeah so then we can solve for p now okay so p here would be uh, just uh, I, I put this and then I divide by cosine 30. So four cosine 45 degrees and then divided by cosine 30 degrees. Okay, then um, we can put it in the calculator. Okay, uh, this one is four cosine 45 over cosine 30 degrees, which is about around uh, 3.27 Newton. Okay, so this is how you uh, deal with this. Okay. And then we also also need to consider Q, okay? So to consider Q, we consider the uh, vertical component, okay? So if you consider vertical component, you see that uh, both the four and the P Newton, uh, if we consider the vertical components, they point upward, and then they must cancel with this Q, okay? So that means uh, we, we must have a Q minus P sine 30 degrees, minus a uh, four sine 45 degrees is equal to zero, okay? And then because we have found P here, we can uh, directly find the uh, Q here, okay? Just, so this is P sine 30 plus uh, four sine 45. So this is equal to um, this times sine 30 and then plus four times sine 45. So it's around 4.46 Newton. Okay? Yeah. So this is how you deal with uh, such kind of uh, problem when you do, uh, when, when the forces are all aligned on a 2D plane. Okay. All right. So uh, could you just go through like, oh, uh, really quickly go through the steps again? So go through what? The, the, the steps. Oh. Um, okay. Okay, next example. Next example would be like uh, you have a plane, okay? And then uh, you your particle is like this, okay? And then you have, this is two Newton, okay? So you have a supporting force from the plane and then you have P Newton here, and then the, 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 the angle here is alpha, okay? And then uh, this, we have a five Newton, okay? And then finally we have a eight Newton here, okay? And then we want to determine, uh, determine P and alpha, okay? So again, we, we consider the components okay so so but but this time it will be convenient if we set our s's to be like this okay if we set our lesson s's as this one which is parallel to the uh, surface and then another s's is perpendicular to the surface you see it's much easier to um to divide to consider the components of the forces okay so for example if you consider this is x axis and this is y axis okay then you will see that uh, if I can consider horizontal, okay. Let me see x direction. Do you, do you choose which one is x and which one is y? Yeah, uh, uh, you choose the one which is uh, convenient for you, okay. So as soon as well, the two well, s's, yes, yes. Uh, what happens if you choose wrong? If you choose wrong, um, then no, I I wouldn't say any. Some assets are wrong, okay, but but some assets will make you make your computation uh, more complicated, okay. They are not wrong. So so how but do you, you choose? So so for ex it depends on the situation, right? For example, if you you you're on the plane, okay. Uh, usually it's more convenient if you choose if you choose your x axis to be parallel to the plane, okay. And then usually, okay, usually, uh. A normal orientation like this would, would work, okay. But in this special case, like a plane, 
like uh, inclined plane, it would be convenient to choose it like this. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, so let's consider horizontal. Okay. So the horizontal, you see, uh, now now the two Newton is parallel to the y, so there's no horizontal component, and then uh, the only forces that have horizontal components are at I think I think P five and eight. They are, they also have, they all have a horizontal component. So um, and then ah oh, I, I forgot to mention a degree here. This thirty degrees. Okay. So uh, now for the five Newton here, you also need the angle because you don't know the angle uh, with the axis, right? But then uh, because this is a, a right triangle, you see this is thirty degrees and then this is sixty degrees. Okay. So uh, now now comes so. So for, for you see, uh, if you consider the horizontal component for five Newton is five cosine sixty degrees, so it's eight plus this five sixty degrees cosine. Sorry, cosine sixty degrees, and then the p times the uh, cosine alpha. Okay, my so this is minus because it's pointing out in opposite direction. So p sine alpha this is equal to zero so this is the horizontal component and then the vertical component the vertical component will be uh, like uh, you have two Newton here uh, the eight Newton doesn't contribute anything and then P Newton you have P sine theta and then you also have this five Newton which contributes at five sine 60 degrees so you have uh, two plus P sine alpha Okay, and then uh, five sine minus si five sine uh, sixty degrees, and this is equal to zero. Okay, and then next you want to solve for p and alpha. So um, now usually when you see a pair like cosine uh, and sine here, yes. Uh, um, can you scroll up? Um, okay. Uh, why is it five sine? Why is it five sine sixty, not five sine thirty? Uh, no, because no. Let me put the force like this. Okay. So, it is like. Uh, put it upside upside down. Okay, you have five. This is this is the x-axis, and then this is sixty degrees, and this is five. Okay, and then. Uh, you you want to consider this component, right? This analogous to this one. So uh, you see, this is five sine sixty degree, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's sine sixty degree. Uh, now, uh, alternatively, you can put this as cosine thirty degrees. They're the same, right? Yep. Hmm. So uh, uh okay, so back to here, okay. So uh the first equation implies P cosine theta alpha is uh eight plus five cosine sixty degrees, and then P sine alpha is equal to uh five sine sixty degrees minus two, and then uh to cancel the P uh we do a division, so one divided by two tangent alpha is 5 sine 60 degrees minus 2 with over of 8 plus 5 cosine 60 degrees and then you can put this in the calculator okay and then you can solve for the alpha here so 5 uh, 5 sine 60 degrees minus 2 divided by 8 plus 5 uh, cosine 60 degrees so which is um, 12.5 degrees okay and then i then put this back to one of these equations i'll put it in the first one okay so p cosine 12.5 degrees equals to 8 uh, 8 plus 5 cosine 60 degrees so p we can uh, find this uh, 5 times cosine 60 over co oh, and then over cosine uh, answer, so this is 10.8 degrees. Okay, is it okay for this example? Um, 
I stuck I stuck it in the stack here. Yeah. Which stack? Uh the 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 sun the the This one? Yeah. Uh I just no, I just put the P cosine theta. Yeah, 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 I know. So after that, the this one. The one over two, yeah. Oh, I'm doing the equation one divided by this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, and then sine over cosine is tangent. Okay, okay. Yep. So, uh. Wait, and, um. And, yeah. You just put that into a calculator. The five sine sixty minus two over eight plus five cosine sixty. You just put it in calculator, right? Yeah, yeah I put it in the calculator and then take arc at tangent. Okay. 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 Yes. So, uh, so this is how you do this question. So every time when you see, see this kind of system, is a very uh, this is a very useful trick. You divide two equations and then the equation become an equation of tangent. Okay. All right. So this is how you um, deal with these situations. So this are no, so far these are just artificial situation. Um, and then uh, next we will go into some real uh, real problem. Okay, so uh, here's our real problem. Okay, so let's say we have a uh, this this one is a horizontal line, and then we have an x here, and then we have a cable. This is so this we have two cables. Okay, and then this is thirty degrees, and then you have a bit here. Okay. Oh, uh, I have a, a, a question. Yes. Uh, what what topic is this? Uh, this is called just a uh, static. Yes, okay. let, me, let me find the name. I think this is about static static particle. Yeah. Yes. Um, any problem with this? Oh uh, no! I just want to know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so can I continue? Yeah. 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 All right. So so back to here. So you have a part a speed which is smooth. Okay. And then uh, oh, um, you have you also have a force which is pulling the uh the bit to the left hand side, and the magnitude is eight newton. Okay. And then um, the problem here is find the tension and and the weight of the bit. All right. So uh, first of all, uh, it, we need to know one thing. Okay. So so because this bit is smooth. Okay. That would means that uh now now because if this is smooth, that means there's no friction inside the speed, right? And then if there's no friction, that means the only force that will uh pull pull this uh bit is these two tensions. Okay. And then and then in that case, uh if now if the tension at these these two sides are different, okay, then the bit will either go to left hand side or right hand side, right? So that yeah. means the tension must be equal here. Okay. So so first of all the, the first thing is when the beat is smooth, okay. Then uh the tension of the two strings are the same. Okay. Strings are the same. Okay, so so once you know this, let's draw the uh the three body diagram for this bit. Okay, that means uh the diagram which shows the forces of acting on this bit. Okay, so uh now remember this bit has a has a weight. So so there's a weight wherever weight is pointing always pointing downward. Okay, and then we also have two tensions. Okay. We also have two tensions. Uh, one is pointing up, okay, and then another one is pointing at the direction of another string, okay. 
And then we also have the disk cooling force, which is eight Newton. This is tension. Okay, and then uh, now when you see this, uh, obviously it is the situation just like this first example. So we will set our axis at uh, in a normal orientation. This is x, and this is y. Okay, so uh, and next, uh, let's let's try to find the angles. Okay, because we don't have angles here. So um, now you you. You may need to know some theorems about geometry to uh, to find angles. So you know uh, this is thirty degrees, and then uh, because the x axis here is parallel to x y, okay, that means uh, if you draw a line this this parallel, you, you know this angle here, okay, this is the alternate angle. So this one must be thirty degrees. Is this okay? Yeah. Yeah. So 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 now uh, next we, we we consider the horizontal and the vertical components. So uh, so horizontal. For the horizontal components, you have two forces, namely the eight newton here, okay, and the uh, t cosine thirty degrees, and they cancel out. So uh, we we have eight uh, equals to t cosine 30, and then you can solve for t. t is just uh, h over cosine 30, which is uh, 9.23, or 9.324, okay. And then uh, this is horizontal, and then the vertical component, okay. So for the vertical component, you see the uh, weight here, uh, and the, the the weights here cancel out with the upward forces, right? Uh, there are two upward forces, namely the the upward the upward uh, tension here, and the uh, and the vertical components of the uh, uh, tension. So you have uh, W equals to T plus T. Uh, remember this component is sine thirty degrees. Okay. So this is the vertical component, and then. And then we have found T, so we can solve for the, uh, you can find the uh, W directly. So answer plus answer sine 30. Oops, sorry. Um, we'll recalculate it. So sine 30. And then answer plus answer sine 30. So this is 13.9 uh, Newton. Okay. Is this, is this okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Next, next example. Okay. Next example is um. This time, this time is like this. Okay. So you have you have an inclined plane. Okay. And uh, this is forty-five degrees. And then uh, you have a pulley here, which is which is a spoof pulley. So with this spoof. Uh, it indicates that then when you have a string here, they, they have the same tension at two sides, okay? So we have uh, two particles. One is like this, and then another one is hanging like this. And then we have a string connecting them. And and also we, we have, this is P Newton, okay? We have a pushing force. And then, um, all right, so, so how, how are you going to solve this problem? Okay. Oh, okay. So I forgot to mention this is 3 kg. Okay, it's 3 kg. And then the cable here uh, also have, the cable here is uh, 1 kg. Okay. All right. So, uh, and then, and then, this is in equilibrium. And, and the problem here is uh, A, find, find P, okay. B, uh, find, the, find the normal reaction. Uh, between 
between the mass and the plane. Okay. So normal reaction means the reaction force uh, acting on the particle by the uh, by the plane. Okay. All right. So so let's let's draw the every force on this diagram first. So first of all, you have this uh, normal reaction. Okay. And then you also have uh, it has a tension here. Okay. And then you have a the weight here, which is. Uh, because this is 3 kg, that means it's 3 g. Okay, where g is the um, gravitational uh, uh, the acceleration. And then, oh, sorry, this is not, I think this is, uh, I think this one is 3 kg, sorry. Right. I wrote a wrong, something wrong here. So this is 3 kg, and then this is 1 kg, and then you have. Um, you have a tension pulling up. All right, and then uh, also we have a force which is one one g here. Uh, first of all, is it okay for the diagram? Yeah. So yeah. So uh, once you have this, okay. So uh, we we first of all consider the tension here. Because it's it's easy to find the tension here because you just have two forces, so uh, a here uh, the t and the one g. Okay, consider consider one kg. Then you you have uh, t equals to one uh, g. This is g which is 9.8 Newton. Uh, is this okay? Yeah. All right, so this is how, uh, how you find the T here. And then you also need to find the R here, okay? So um, for the R here, you, again, because it's an inclined plane, you have plane, so uh, you, you consider axis parallel to the plane. Okay, so now the T here is parallel to the plane. So you have this. Also the reaction is per uh, perpendicular to the plane. So you have this R here. And then uh, you also have P Newton and then the 3G here, okay. And then uh, let's find the angle here, okay. So remember this is 45 degrees, okay. So because the P, the vector here is parallel to the, uh, the ground, okay? So they are, these two are alter, uh, alternate angles. So this is 45 degrees, okay? Uh, and then what else? Okay, we also need to find the angle of the 3G here, okay? So but because these two are per perpendicular, okay, this is 90 degrees. So this angle here is also 45 degrees, okay? Yeah. All right. So once we have this whole diagram here, again we consider the horizontal and the vertical components. Okay. So for the horizontal components, you see uh, this P is pushing to the uh, to the this direction, and the T also pushed to this direction. So uh, it will cancel out with the three G, which I mean the I mean the uh, horizontal component of the three G. Okay. So you have uh, T plus uh, this P Newton times uh, cosine 45 is equal to uh, 3G cosine 45, okay? So, uh, can you understand this? No. No, no let, me, let me repeat, okay. So you have th this P Newton here, okay? Uh, yeah. So, so if you resolve the component, it will point to this direction, right? If this is p. Yeah. And then uh, you also have this is p, and then this is p to the x direction. Also for t, you 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 point in this in this direction, right? 
Yeah. And for the 3G here, 3G here, this is 45 degrees. Okay. So uh, if you consider the components parallel to the plane, this is uh, pointing in this direction, right? Yeah. So so the T. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I get it now. Yep. All right. So uh, now, uh, and because we have found T, so we can solve for the P here. Okay. So P is uh, 3G cosine 45 degrees, the uh, minus P cosine, uh, sorry, no, minus T, minus T divided by cosine 45. Yeah. So I subtract the T and then divide by this cosine 45. And then um, we have found T to be 9.8, so we can put all the things in the calculator. Uh, this is cosine 45 minus. Uh, 9.8 and then divided by cosine 45. So this is uh, 15.5 Newton. So is this okay now? Yeah. All right. And then B, okay. Find the normal reaction between the mass and the plane. Okay. So uh, now so far we've just considered the uh, horizontal component. We have, haven't considered the vertical component. So the part of this city, we should consider that, okay? So, uh, so looking back at this diagram here, okay, if we consider vertical forces, what do we have, okay? First of all, uh, now, uh, you have the R, which points uh, in the direction perpendicular to the plane. Uh, the T here doesn't have any contribution. Uh, we also have this P Newton here, which is, uh, we, which contribute to a uh, force, which is, uh, opposite to the normal reaction. Okay, so this P in the X direction. And also the uh, 3G here, it will contribute another force, which is uh, perpendicular to the plane. And and so this is 3G, and then remember this is, uh, this is, if you consider this component is sine theta, is cosine theta, if you consider that component is, uh, sine 45 okay so sine 45 all right and then so um remember this is n okay so so we have n uh is equal to these two forces so px px is given by p uh cosine 45 uh, sorry p sine 45 yeah p sine 45 so p sine 45 uh, degrees plus 3g sine 45 degrees so uh, so we have this is equal to um, p we have found in a in sine 45 plus 3 times 9.8 times sine 45 so this is uh, 31.8 degree as nutrients uh, is this okay um, where's the P sine 45 from? P sine 45 is the uh, component which is uh, parallel to this axis. Remember, if you, if you put it in this direction, it's cosine. If you put it in this direction, it's sine. Okay. Do you understand? Uh, no. Remember the first picture here? Okay. Yeah. If the angle is here, this component is cosine. Another component is sine. Because, okay. uh, so, why is it sine? Sine, because it's, it's, this length is equal to this, this length. Uh huh. So you have sine. So, so this picture is the same, right? You're putting, you're considering this component and that component. Yeah. Yeah, so if I, if I consider the component which is parallel to this axis, it is, it is sine. Okay? Okay. Yep. So, um, any, any other question? No. Wait, uh, yeah. Why is it, uh, why is, why is, um, why is P going in the other direction? Well, because 
you can you can see that if you put consider this component is pointing in this direction. But I thought you were using the other one. Uh, the, you, which way? No, there. This the axes are here, right? So one component is pointing in this direction, which is uh parallel to this. Another component is pointing in this direction, which is parallel to this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that is why. I thought, yes. I thought you were using the the the, the red one. No. Because I, I'm using the vertical. Vertical means it's this this axis. Yeah. This direction. So this one is like the purple one is sine. Yeah, it's, this one is sine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no other question, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, okay. Last topic of this chapter. Which is about friction and static particles. Okay, so first of all, uh, we we have to understand the how how friction works. Okay, so uh, intuitively, intuitively, friction is a force which resists motion. Okay, and then um, and then also in another intuition with that that that's appealing to us is that uh, the friction should depends on the normal reaction, right? For example, if you if a box on the ground. If you push it harder to the ground, it should have a, a stronger friction from the ground, right? Yeah. So, so that's why uh, we have the following uh, facts. Okay. So uh, let's suppose. So so first of all, uh, there's something called mu, which is called the coefficient of friction. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, F, uh, suppose F is a friction, okay. Then uh, we know that F is proportional to R, right? As I mentioned, R, R is the normal version, okay. So uh, the pro what's the proportionality constant? Okay, the proportionality constant is equal to, is exactly this mu, okay? So uh, the maximum friction, okay, equals to uh, mu of R, okay? So this is a fact you need to know. Is this okay? Yeah. So uh, now, why do I say maximum friction, but not just friction, okay? Because, uh, you know, friction is not fixed, okay? Uh, for example, so, so you know, for example, if you, if you, if you have, a, have a, a object, okay? Uh, for example, you have a very, very huge stone, okay? So uh, your, your force has to exceed certain values so that you can push the uh, rock forward, right? And so uh, that's, why, that's why, for example, if you have an object, okay, and then, uh, so if you have a force here, and then you have a friction, which is equal to a friction, okay, then, then we have the following fact, okay? The fact here is um, if your force is not large enough, so that means if, if F is smaller than mu R, smaller than equal to mu R, okay? Then uh, the friction F just equal to F, the large F, which is the pushing force, okay? That means you. That means the the object is stationary. Is this okay? Yep. And then, uh, once your force exceed, uh, exceed mu r, then uh, the friction. 
the friction will be exactly equal to uh, mu r. And in this case, that means uh, f, that means that f here is bigger than the, uh, the friction, which is equal, exactly equal to mu r. Okay. And, and then that, that would mean that the, the object is moving. Wait, uh, what, what is the, what is the small f again? Small f, small f is a friction. Okay. Good. So, so if your force is too small, it's not large enough, then the friction will be equal to your pushing force. Wait, the big F is force? Yes, the applied force here. Oh, because like in the, because it's a bit confusing because in the... Oh, oh, let me use yeah. small F here, maybe, yeah. Uh, is that, is it, is it fine now? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm sorry for the confusion. Um, so can you understand these two? Okay. Yeah. So, so that's why it is called maximum, maximum friction, because it can't exceed this mu r, okay? And, uh, and let's see an example, uh, which, is, uh, which is about friction, okay? So for example, you have a uh, box, okay? You have a box, which is uh, eight, 8 kg, okay? And then uh, there are, uh, so, so if you have a boss resting on the ground, okay, so you have an eight times G, okay. And then you also have the normal reaction R, which is pointing up, okay. And then um, let's, say, let's say it's pushing, there's a force which uh, pushes the, the object forward. And then finally we have the friction. Okay, and then here uh, it is given that uh, the the frictional coefficient is uh, zero point five. Okay, so uh, our our task here is to uh, find uh, p. Oops, sorry, find p such that. Uh, the object, how is it? Find, find the largest value of P. Yeah. Find the largest uh, value of P. Uh, which, which is applied to the force so that object so that so that is the object still move and it's still stationary. Okay. Stationary. Yeah, so this is the problem here. Um all right, let's see. Okay. So as I mentioned, um, now because if the force is small than equal to uh, mu mu r, then the friction uh, is equal to f, and then in this case the object is stationary. Okay, so uh, so that means when would this extreme value occur? Okay, it will occur when the friction he here is exactly uh, mu mu r, and then the p here will cancel with this friction. Okay. So, so the here, the, the key here is we need to know that uh, F equal to mu R uh, in this case. Okay? Yeah. All right, then uh, once, we, once we know this F equal to mu R, then, um, but we don't know R, right? Although we know that this uh, mu is 0 0.5, okay? Yeah. We don't know R, but actually R we can we can solve it uh, using the, uh, the the vertical component, right? So the ver consider the vertical component. Then uh, R minus H G is equal to zero uh, because this is still stationary. 
just, it's just r equals ag, right? Yeah, or r equal to ag, yeah. So this is uh, so this is the r, and then once we have this, let's put this put this back to here. So the friction is equal to zero point five times hg, so which is four g. Yes? Right, and then you use the horizontal component, so so it's four g equals p. Yeah, so four g, so yeah, so horizontal and then four g equal to p. Okay. So this is the largest value, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, wait, sorry. Um, is G equals 9.8 Newtons like every time? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but, but actually you can, uh, actually in exam you can leave it like this, okay. If you don't need okay. the value, yeah. Yeah. But eight, uh, actually 9.8 is approximation. Uh, it's not an exact value. But then uh, sometimes maybe that maybe the question involves a lot of steps. So you need to use approximate value to simplify a step. Okay. All right. So another problem uh, is that uh, instead we solve the same problem. Okay. Same problem above. But uh, this time uh, the object is like this. Okay. You. Uh, again, the object is 8 kg, and then we have the normal reaction, normal reaction R, and then you have the P here, which points in this direction. And then uh, again, you have the friction. And then the, uh, also, uh, the, the, the coefficient of friction is still 0 0.5, okay. Again, and then, uh, we want to find solve for the p here, okay? So this time, uh, actually, it's not that it's not more complicated than than the previous problem because uh, once you have you can uh, consider the two components of p, then you'll be able to solve for the friction. Yeah, just that maybe you need to solve a simultaneous tennis equation. Okay, so once once again, okay, once again, the uh, r is equal to zero point. Uh, sorry, no, I mean f f is equal to 0 0.5 r okay and then uh, oh, can, I try, can i try this one by myself oh okay, okay yeah, yeah um what is what is sine 60 sine 60 is i think 0 0.5 let me see Sine sixty. No, uh, it's square root. Three over square three. Square root right? three over two. Yeah, square root three over two. Wait. Oh. So, um, uh, it's, answer, it's yeah, 8G, minus, 8G minus P sine 60 over, uh, over 2. You mean the P? Oh. Wait, uh, let me try that again. Now the final wait, answer. We're, we're finding, like, we're looking for P? Uh, yeah, P. Okay, okay. But actually, you need to find R. Yeah. Uh, or, or you can eliminate R and then get the P. Yeah, because in, finally, you need to solve a simultaneous equation here. It just, like, it's R plus P sine 60 equals 8G, right? R plus P times uh, sine 60 equals 8G. Yes, exactly. Um, wait, then is the friction useless in this in this question? Um, not really. You need to consider two components, right? And yeah. You also need to consider the horizontal component. So for the horizontal 
uh, component is f equals p cosine 60. f equal to p cosine 60. Uh, yes. Okay, so. Um, okay, uh, so p, p cosine 60 is f and p sine 60 is 8g minus r. Yeah. So p, p, wait, so we need to use tangent here? Mm, tangent, no, we're not finding angle, right? Mm. Then, then how do we do a something? Um, wait, I think, I think you get, let me write down, r, r plus p sine 60, equal to 8g, and then r, and then r, and P, P cosine 60 equal to uh, 0.5 R. Yeah. And then so, so, so that means. Oh, you, solving for R. It's solving for P, right? So you should eliminate R. R is uh, 2 P cosine 60. I think this is P, exactly P, right? So. And then, so um, you put this back here. Um, R P P plus P sine sixty equal to eight G. So you get P equal to eight G over one plus sine sixty. Okay. Uh. Bit confused. Which which that? Wait, two. Why is two p cosine sixty equal p? Um, two two cos cosine sixty is one half. Oh oh oh. Okay okay. Yeah. So uh, any any other question? No. No. Okay. So um yeah so so I think I think is uh, I think I finished this chapter yeah so um so any other questions so far uh no no okay oh, how, many, how many chapters are left in the mechanics unit I think uh no if I don't count the for the chapter about force then yeah. it will be uh just one chapter. Left. Moment, moment. Yes. Uh, is that one? Is that is that like a hard chapter or one of the easier ones? Uh, I think I think it's an easier one. I think this one is more difficult. You know, sometimes yeah. may, maybe you have difficulty in drawing all these forces. Yeah, yeah, this is the hardest one. Yeah. So I think moment, it, you you should be fine. Yeah. Uh, what about the like the stats? Um, like stats. How many chapters are in stats? Uh, let me check. Okay. This one. Yeah. Of course, that. Let me see the chat. This one. Yeah. So for stat one, which is the first book, there will be around, I think, mean, seven chapters. Yeah. It's about the same for each example, right? Uh, I think. Uh, I think. I think. No, in overall, the content will be the same. Okay, but I don't know. I don't know whether the the uh, how how they distribute the con the topics in different books. Okay, so maybe maybe they they maybe for the first book maybe one one example we we have just six chapters, but for other set there were seven chapters. Okay. But eventually you will be, you'll be learning all of these. But for but for each um for for each exam board it will it will always be three sections, right? Pure math, stats, and mechanics. Uh yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh I, I think I think I made I made an introduction in the first lesson, right? You can just yeah, refer yeah. to that PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh so any other question? Uh no. No, okay. 
So if there's no other question, maybe let's end the lesson here. Okay. 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 okay so bye bye.